Hi everyone, I'm Fabot. I'm a postdoc at University of Oslo. Today I'll be talking about instabilities um, appearing in dark energy models. Uh, this talk is based on these three publications and here is uh, the list of my collaborators. <coughs> Around 20 years ago we found out that the universe has entered an accelerating expansion phase uh, through supernovae observations. In fact, we measured the, the magnitude or distances of these objects versus the redshift and we made the Hubble diagram and it uh, it turned out that these objects at uh, large uh, distances uh, appear to be systematically fainter than expected due to cosmic acceleration and it has led us it had led us to uh, to discover uh, accelerating expansion and not only by supernovae observations, but later uh, through the CMB and large scale structure data analysis, we confirmed uh, this um, phase in the universe. And what we know about uh, the cosmic acceleration is that it has to account around 70% of the universe uh, energy density budget. At cosmological scales, it has to have uh, anti gravity behavior and um, this uh, component. Uh, shouldn't cluster uh, significantly uh, in small, especially in small scales. And one of the main questions today we have in cosmology is regarding the nature of cosmic acceleration and the possibilities cosmologists uh, have come up with are either by considering cosmological constants, which is nowadays a standard theory, or by uh, changing the right-hand side of Einstein's equations by adding, by considering a new component, which we call dark energy, or by changing the left-hand side uh, and going beyond general relativity. And during past years, many theories of uh, dark energy and uh, modified gravity models have been developed, uh, which uh, it turned out that at large, at cosmological scales, many of these theories can have uh, similar behavior which led uh, us to uh, which leads us to consider effective field theory idea in effective field theory uh, framework we don't care about the details of uh, a certain theory or a high energy limit we we, we would rather care about uh, uh, small large scale cos or in here could be cosmological scales or low energy limit of theories and in fact, in effective field theory of dark energy, we can write down a general action for class of theories, and we can show that uh, it's somehow these uh, free parameters are minimal, uh, especially in connection uh, with observations. And uh, uh, so far, uh, these uh, dark energy and modified gravity theories are studied very well, uh, especially those that we hear a lot are checked against uh, observations uh, at, lin at le the level of background and linear level. However, one of the main questions, uh, especially uh, in light of uh, future precise surveys would be, are these theory really viable in the sense that if we consider them um, uh, consistently and we solve the full equations going to nonlinear orders. Are they still viable? Uh, because, uh, yeah, we know that the linear order uh, they perform well, but what about the nonlinear corrections? Uh, don't they destroy everything? So, what uh, specifically I mean is that if we uh, make the universe. I mean, uh, here, is, uh, I mean, through embody simulations, if we have uh, a universe which cosmological constant is responsible for dark energy uh, component, and in the other one, we have another modified gravity or dark energy theory, and we run simulations and we uh, look at the universe at redshift zero at the current time, um, do we get... Um, a consistent uh, structure formation uh, and so this is a uh, this is one of the main questions uh, we have nowadays especially because we are gonna put very tight constraints uh, in near future using observational data 
uh, part from the importance of nonlinear uh, modeling, which is demanded by uh, high precision measurements we will have in the in near future, I'm going to show that uh, there is a more important reason to consider nonlinearities in these theories, and that's the instabilities can arise uh, through the nonlinear terms uh, through uh, nonlinear corrections of uh, these models. Uh, what I'm going to discuss specifically is that nonlinear evolution of the KSN theory leads to an instability. And by KSN theory, uh, what I mean fundamentally is uh, a Lagrangian, a general Lagrangian, which is a function of kinetic term and scalar field. It can be any function you can think of. There are some standard ones, for example, quintessence also is part of this uh, this uh, Lagrangian. However, we can show that uh, uh, cosmological scales, uh, these theories can be parametrized uh, by two uh, important parameters, which are the equation of state W, which tells us about the relation between pressure and density of the fluid, and the speed of sound squared, which tells us how fast the perturbations propagate. And uh, basically, this is, a, this is an effective field theory a description of these cer a certain type of theories. Uh, I'm going to discuss the instability in the cosmological con context, uh, which are discussed uh, in details in these two publications. Uh, I'm going to use the K evolution and body code, uh, and also I'm going to show you that in, if we if we uh, simplify this this equations in one plus one d dimensions uh, analytically leads to an instability uh, when we derive the scalar field uh, evolution we see that it's uh, given by a second order in time partial differential equation by second order in time I mean the highest time derivative is two and also uh, the highest uh, special derivative on a scalar field is two as well uh, the pi here represents the scalar field perturbation and the, this partial differential equation has a bunch of linear terms and also some nonlinear corrections. Just uh, note that the, the first two lines, the linear part is implemented different codes like class and high class and has been shown that KSN is a viable theory uh, against uh, observations. Uh, however, here I'm I'm going to show that if we consider nonlinearities, it leads to an instability. And what we found uh, through embodied simulations is that the most important nonlinear term, which is the reason behind instability, is this term, which is grad pi squared or uh, the special derivative of pi. Uh, squared, and in in fact, this is a this is a very important term, and uh, it's very hard to prevent instability when we have this term in our uh, partial differential equation. We specifically see that when we have a small speed of sound for the KSNs, the uh, the evolution of the KSN scalar field leads to an instability, which is very localized and happens very suddenly in time. Um, uh, what we s uh, see through embodied simulations is that it occurs only when we have small speed of sound. Uh, specifically through experiments, uh, we know that the speed of sound squared uh, uh, should be less than 10 to the minus 4.7 to see this instability. And uh, just remember the speed of sound shows how far the perturbations propagate and when the speed of sound squared is small, means that we have localized structures and uh, the perturbations cannot move around. Here uh, I'm going to show an animation with just for illustrative purposes. Uh, here you see the scalar fit solution where the colors show whether the scalar fit perturbation is larger than the average or is smaller and uh, uh, Initially, at redshift 100, we have a uh, very small uh, variation around the average. Uh, when time passes, 
uh, there will be some structures uh, of KSNs but nothing special happens so the perturbations are small but very suddenly at a very specific redshift uh, at, at a point an instability occurs I mean the, the scale of it goes to infinity suddenly and as you can see uh, at the other points nothing happens but at uh, this special point we have uh, a block I mean, if you look at the time uh, before that, everything is fine, uh, and then suddenly this instability being generated. And what we know is that for larger speed of sound squared, there is no instability. I mean, this is what we know from uh, cosmological simulations. Uh, and in order to understand uh, what's going on precisely, we have to somehow, I mean, um, we have to study this uh, question analytically and to do so uh, from this complicated nonlinear partial differential equation we only consider two terms, two most important terms and also a spherical symmetry and what we obtain is this uh, more or less much simpler partial differential equation where the first term is the Laplace term and if we have alpha equal to zero we basically recover the wave solution and uh, the nonlinear term which I uh, discussed that is the main reason of the instability is uh, this term and specifically for CS squared goes to zero where we don't have wave solution at all so the wave we have completely goes away we recover this part non-linear partial differential equation and I'm going to show that analytically that this PD is unstable and what happens is that the curvature of the scalar feed around uh, minima blows up in finite time and that's very important that it blows up in finite time it's not uh, instability which happens in the, uh, in the infinity so in order to see that uh, we can simply see that there is a special solution which helps us a lot to understand what happens and that is R squared if you put R squared into this PD you see there is a solution and the coefficient of R squared is actually the curvature of this uh, quadratic function and if you put this whole solution into the PD you obtain an ODE uh, for the curvature of the uh, this uh, potential well or this uh, quadratic function and what you can see is that the, the this ODE which tells you that the kappa the curvature double dot equal to alpha kappa squared uh, is you can think of it as a Newton second law with the force x squared and the force x squared uh, corresponds to a potential uh, of minus four third x cubed and this potential well actually is unstable no matter where uh, you put the particle with whatever speed it rolls into the minus infinity infinite and you can solve it analytically and see that the curvature goes to infinity at uh, a time given by a formula and that the, the time of blow up depends on the initial condition and the way that the si this system blows up in time is like 1 over t tau squared and this has been studied uh, in more details in this uh, paper uh, and when we solve the, the simplified equation in 1 plus 1 numerically uh, considering some initial conditions but really the initial conditions do not matter as far as we have the speed of sound equal to zero what we see is that the minimum uh, becomes sharper and sharper and at some time uh, goes to I mean the the curvature goes to infinity and becomes very super sharp and the reason we have points here first of all this is a numerical solution in on a lattice on a fixed uh, mesh lattice in 1 plus 1 and the reason becomes um, we have only two points is because uh, the, the profile uh, being stretched 
and we don't have enough resolution to resolve the block. Uh, this is very interesting because it reminds us uh, of the same phenomena we see in cosmology. And somehow it told us that uh, we, we, we are considering, uh, we most probably are considering the, the, the reason behind instability correctly. We have recently found a very interesting phenomena uh, by considering non-zero speed of sound uh, in this simplified setup. Uh, which we call it the M-type blow-up and is discussed in this paper. And uh, remember, this uh, non-zero speed of sound means that uh, there will be a wave-like behavior and the perturbations propagate. And in cosmological setups, we saw that when we have large speed of sound, because the perturbations go far, uh, the, the, there will be no dark energy clustering. And as a result, we, we didn't see any blow-up uh, for large speed of sound. However, in this paper and for this simplified setup, we show that for any non-zero lump alpha, meaning when we have this nonlinear uh, term present, for any speed of sound, even superluminal speed of sound larger than uh, one, there will be a blob. And this is a counterintuitive result, especially compared to what we see in cosmological <coughs> simulations. And the way that this blows up, this blow up happens, is uh, uh, like this that I'm going to show in this animation. The minimum becomes sharper because of this nonlinear term. However, at some point, the Laplace term dominates, and the minimum turns into a maximum. And there will be there will be a wave which goes outward, and the speed of the new maxima, these two points. Uh, are much larger than the speed of this minimum and what happens is the line connecting these two points are becoming steeper and steeper and at some point blows up so we see a we see an m m shape uh, profile in the scale of it. this happens in a finite time and this can be proved that uh, you cannot remove this instability by increasing cs squared However, you, it can happen at later time, but it cannot be avoided. And let me conclude with some take-home messages. Uh, I've shown that nonlinearities can become very important, especially for the case of KSNs. Cosmological embodied simulations put bound of CS square to be larger than 10 to 4.7. Uh, however, from mathematical point of view, any CS square can lead to instability. How can these two be connected? We don't know yet. It's an open question. And at the end, the question is, can KSNs be a cosmic acceleration candidate at all? Uh, thanks a lot for your attention.